guys, my name is Shai N and welcome to Fitness 101. Today we're going to be discussing um, diets and where to start. I have with me Fatin Muzini, who is my bestie, and she's going to be appearing with me in the next three other episodes. So how basically every woman had, or man really has um, started a diet, uh, they start off really really well, start losing a bit. And then when life starts to get a little bit difficult, starts throwing lemons at them and stuff, they start to freak out, or they don't lose enough weight and they get really frustrated. And then all of a sudden they start quitting their diet and they go back to square one. If not back to square one, they gain a lot more weight and then the vicious cycle continues. So what I really want to discuss and get someone else's opinion on this as well is how to basically start your diet and if you really need to, how to keep it going over the long term. And I mean, if you don't know what Fatin looks like, <laughs> um, you can basically just go onto my Instagram, The Little Lifter, and we have a lot of videos on there as well. So she's had a lot of success with her diet and I obviously have a lot of success with mine. So there's something that we both must be doing that's working really well for us, right? Yeah. So how's your diet like? Okay, um, should I just talk about what I'm currently doing or what I've done before? Let's or... start with what you've done before. Okay, so for the diets that I have tried before, uh, you might be familiar with some of these. So there's the paleo one. Done that. Uh, there's also the gluten-free one. Done that. And then the one that's, this one is a little bit more, I guess, unfamiliar for most people. It's called the blood type diet did not do that one yeah so i thought that was really interesting but um so those are the three diets that i've tried um everything else like all the things that i feel like are coming up now that's trending like the sos one the that's keto no one salt and sugar for those who don't know what sos stands yeah, for and the ke ke ketogenic keto. yeah so those two i haven't tried and i don't want to try because i'm pretty happy with where i am right now with yeah with what i'm eating so you've never tried like no carb, low carb, high fat. No, that one. That one is the keto one, right? Uh, Atkins, really. Oh, the Atkins. No, that one I've never tried. Um, so yeah, those are the three diets that I tried. Um, I guess that was probably between. It, that was probably during uni years. Yeah. And that's when you were a bit chubbier as well, right? I guess so, but I, I felt like at one point I think the, I think the gluten free one I lost weight, but then again. You're That's cutting a lot of carbs, obviously you're going to lose weight, it's just logic. If you're going to do the gluten-free diet, basically everything has gluten in it, so you end up eating um, the same thing that each and every diet requests you to do, which is cut down your carbohydrates, stop eating so much refined stuff, processed food and stuff, so you end up just eating um, whole food, which is something that you can view on my Instagram, um, and then... Yeah, that's basically what every single diet basically yeah. preaches. Eat whole food. Yeah, and at that time I remember when I was doing the gluten-free one and I did lose weight. Uh, I thought it worked because... <laughs> All I diets mean, work, guys. But then again, logically, of course it's going to work because you're obviously eating less, so obviously you're going to lose weight. And at that time as well, I was really into touch rugby and I felt like I was running faster, but... It was I, all in her head. <laughs> yeah, I feel like, honestly, guys, it's all in my head and... And having to, you know, having to force yourself to cut foods that you love, like to me, I don't know about you guys, but to me, it's just not worth it. Did you actually feel restricted when you were doing the, any of the three diets? Like, did you crave anything outside of what that diet wanted you to cut? I think so. It's been a while though, but I know, I remember just not, just not liking dieting in general because you do have to cut things that you probably love and... So you actually felt a little depressed? Well, I don't know about depressed, but... Uh, okay, sad. Sorry, depressed yeah. is a very strong word. <laughs> yeah, but I think sad. Because, um, yeah, because they're just like... I'm sure they're just some foods that you just love to eat, and having to just cut it out for the sake of a diet... Did you have cheat days? I think I did. Because um, I think this... I remember, like, that whole gluten-free thing was kind of like an experiment that me and my uni mates wanted to try. It was like, you know, those that, there was that one post that was going around that was viral, like, 30... Uh, 30 days free of cake, whatever, candy, anything that has gluten in it, basically. So her uni days was about five years ago, right? Yeah. Five to seven years ago. Yeah. And you can see that the trend is still there with these funny, funny diets where it tells you to, you know, follow this for 30 days, you're confirmed to lose weight. 
But the issue with these kind of things is they don't tell you what happens post the 30 days. Like, what do you do after that? Are you supposed to carry on, but you don't really like it? So why would you want to do that, right? I mean, 30 days isn't that long, really. And I mean, a lifetime is a lot longer, obviously. <laughs> so, you know, if you give up food for 30 days and then you have to do what for the rest of your life, they don't tell you those kind of things. So the most important part isn't what you learn within the 30 days. It's more what you learn after you leave the diet. Like, are you able to stop eating a lot of that food majority of the time and snack on it when you actually deserve it? And the term deserving food is actually something um, contradictory as well because, you know, a lot of people say we're not animals. We don't deserve a treat. You know, treats are for, I'm not going to say what animal, but you can imagine what I'm trying to um, put across here. So you don't deserve a treat. Um, you know, food is just food and you shouldn't view it as good food, bad food, food that's going to make me happy. So the, that's the issue with these kind of... Um, diets where they tell you do this for 30 days you'll lose x amount of weight what next after that how are you supposed to maintain that weight loss if you haven't learned anything within those 30 days which clearly Fatin didn't either because <laughs> i'm assuming you gained weight after that right i think so yeah um i went to, on a period where i was really skinny then i put on weight then i was thin again then i put on weight again so what do you do now? Because that's obviously not your cycle anymore. No, and um, you seem to be pretty on the ball with what you eat. I guess now, I mean, similar to you, I don't really choose what I eat. Um, I pretty much eat whatever I want. Although, uh, I think what I've really stuck to in all my dieting days is, I guess, kind of like, I don't know if you guys heard of this, kind of like the quadrant. So like you separate your plates into, you know, your carbs, your veggies, and your proteins. So I usually, obviously half of my plate is gonna be veggies, and then the other half will be protein and carbs. So that's pretty much how I usually eat these days. Um, but I guess what I also make sure, I'm also very aware of how much I eat as well, although I don't count calories or whatever, but I think just being aware of what you eat and how much you eat and you don't have to count calories if you can't be bothered because I definitely can't be bothered but yeah just knowing what like what you're eating and like okay I think I'm eating a lot or you can even just check your weight that's another easy way to, ju to just see whether if you're putting on more weight during that day so just maybe stop eating and just drink water the rest of the day so I'm gonna take a few steps back um, with what she just said uh, basically what she meant about her plate is um, some people, uh, there's actually a diagram for this where uh, the health officials try and make you eat more veggies by showing you the portion of your plate that should be um, carbs, protein, and vegetables. So I'm pretty sure this uh, diagram can be found online really, what your plate should look like, I think it's called. And then um, what she's describing in terms of her diet is more like intuitive eating where if she's hungry that's when she eats if her body wants specific things that's when she goes to look for it um, and basically it's it's a method that a lot of people use especially if they have started initially started with like calorie counting macro counting and stuff and once they get a hang of that they usually go into intuitive eating but she's started and ended <laughs> with intuitive eating just because I mean if you have um, body goals where you know you want to um, increase your muscle mass or get leaner uh, have the six-pack and stuff like that uh, what she's doing probably wouldn't apply just because you need a lot of um, different dynamics that go behind that but if you're generally just wanting to look better feel better be energetic and stuff then the intuitive diet is definitely something to look into um, in her case, like, we eat cake all the time when yeah. we meet each other, <laughs> you know, we have coffee, we don't have limitations, um, you see her eat donuts, I mean, I eat donuts, so basically we're doing the exact same thing, just she doesn't count calories and she's more, actually I wouldn't say she's more aware, um, just because I've got other goals, we have very different yeah, goals in terms of body goals. type um like i'm a competitor so i need to look a certain way and grow whereas fatin does just does bodybuilding as a part-time thing yeah. right i mean i my goal is to i want to be a little bit more lean but obviously i don't want to be putting on more 
weight. So it's just being Maintaining. able to, yeah, being able to hit that same weight and I guess um, lift more. Yeah, there yeah. you go. So strength training. Yeah. Like, whereas in my case, it's more putting on muscle, um, needing to look a certain way. I need to bulk. I need to cut. There's a lot of dynamics that go into mine. That's why I calorie and macro count, which isn't for everyone, especially if you're not thinking about, you know, strength or um, gaining more muscle and stuff like that. Then I'm doing something totally extreme to the general population who don't need to do this. Um, whereas what Fatin does is something totally applicable to anyone and anyone. Um, if you feel like a cookie, go have a cookie, but make sure you don't eat 10, <laughs> you know? Um, if you ate so much today and you put on a little bit tomorrow, then, you know, don't eat so much tomorrow. That's basically what intuitive eating is. Um, and plus, like, even when she does eat, she doesn't finish her food. Yeah, She I think, forgot yeah, to say again, that. Yeah, again, like when I said being aware of, yeah, I mean what you eat is one thing but also how you feel when you eat because i know there are some people that like to eat and you're like oh like you're full up to your head you know some people just love to eat like that like where they polish off their food yeah whereas for me like i i'm i already know that i hit a certain point where i feel just nice and yes as Shava said i never finish my food i eat it for her yeah so yeah i usually hit a certain point where I'm just satisfied, I'm just nice, and I'm not going to go back to work like a zombie, be like, ugh, I can't Where she car work. crashes. <laughs> uh, yeah, basically. So, so yeah. basically, um, what we both do is general awareness of our body. What works, what food would make us sluggish, uh, what's to the point where you would end up needing to stop. If you gained a little bit of weight the next day, um, really calculate and see what you can cut out today. It's actually the healthiest way you can actually do something because at the end of the day, if you don't know how you tick, how is anyone else going to know how you tick? <laughs> you know what I mean? So if you don't know what works for you, then no one else can tell you what is going to work for you, especially in whatever life cycle you're in right now. If you have kids, don't expect to be the same weight you were when you didn't have kids, you know? So apply whatever works for you to your current lifestyle situation. So if you're sedentary, maybe start moving a bit more. If you're an emotional eater, find out what's triggering those emotions and battle it head on. Yeah. You're not a stress eater, right? No. Well, I go, I go through phases where I'm like, I'll stress eat and then I'll starve and then I'll stress eat. Okay, <laughs> maybe we won't have that on air. <laughs> um, but. Uh. Yeah, okay, so she's not a stress eater. <laughs> but but yeah. basically, just figure out what is triggering your stress eating, your emotional eating, and actually tackle it head on. Um, once you actually figure out what is the triggers to those kind of things, at least you'll know wh how to distract yourself when an emotional eating binge is going to come on. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed today's discussion about where to start if you want to start dieting. Um, we have another three more episodes of me with Fatin on for this month. That was Fitness 101. This is Shai Nokman, and I hope you enjoyed the show.